have our storyboards complete, it's time to take these simple drawings and illustrations and bring them to life. Storyboards do an excellent job of describing the overall narrative, the sequence of shots that's required to establish the narrative or the story, if you will, of our little short film. They do a fantastic job of showcasing to both the author and the audience what keyframes are required and what the general movements within the shot need to be so that the story is visually told through all of our animations. However, the one thing that our storyboards lack is a real solid sense of timing, duration, and speed. These simple illustrations define, almost kind of create the DNA, if you will, of our story, but they really don't create the DNA or the blueprint for the movements themselves, the timing and the speed of the movements. We want to take all of our storyboard panels and begin to uh, start to animate the storyboards so that we have a very fine understanding, a very direct comprehension to how long each of these shots need to be so that our audience can understand the content of the shot. We have it locked in our imagination at this point. We started to materialize that basic simple idea of our story and the storyboards, and now we're going to upscale and continue to add new details into the storyboards so that we truly understand what it is that we need to build to visually tell our stories through some animations. And we're going to do that, of course, over in Blender using a new part of our technology called the Video Sequence Editor. Now, I've just opened up Blender, and I'm going to start a new project file and they have a great workspace, workspace template down here called Video Editing. Now, if you're working in an existing project file that contains all of your, contains all your storyboards, so I've just opened up the general workspace, don't worry, the Video Sequence Editor is absolutely still available to us in this little plus sign way up here at the top. This is going to add a new tab, and we're going to go into the Video Editing tab and choose Video Editing. The Rendering tab will come to much later, but we're going to start our day in video editing. And welcome to the video sequence editor inside of Blender. The video sequence editor inside of Blender is a non-linear video editing environment. So this is very similar to Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, or maybe even DaVinci Resolve. It allows us to place audio, video, photographs, music inside of our timeline down here and edit and cut and place them together in a way that creates a sequence of shots. It's a really exciting environment to work in and it's wonderful that it's built in right here inside of Blender. Now the thing that we have to note before we go any further is that we got to know where all of our media is stored. So we're going to use stuff, if you will, photographs and animations that we, that's already been created. We're not going to be creating animations in the video sequence editor. We're going to be editing them together. So let's go ahead and find where we're going to go here. I have a folder on my desktop. It's got a whole bunch of stuff in it, including some wonderful storyboards from the film Dumbo. You saw this just a moment ago. So these are all individual JPEGs. Now I've sorted my media browser here to show me a list. If you go into this one, you can actually see the individual, uh, individual pictures themselves, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to start my day by working with these photographs. These are JPEGs. So there's nothing too fancy about it. And how we incorporate an existing file into our sequence is really quite easy. It literally is as simple as dragging and dropping it into anywhere down here inside of our timeline. Now, you, don't have to, you just have to drag it somewhere. You don't have to drag it to where you want. The computer is automatically going to place this clip at the location of your playhead, which is this gigantic blue line here. Now, we're accustomed to seeing these playheads and understanding our sequence settings from our experience in, the, in, uh, in creating animations in Blender, so this isn't anything new. But please do note, let me select and hit the X key to delete it, that it's automatically going to place whatever you drag and drop at the location of the playhead. Let's try it one more time. Boop, and there it goes. So it goes right down there to the playlist, or to, uh, to the playhead. With a clip inside of our sequence, we can start to look and understand how the sequence editor is constructed and what information it's giving to us. Now, over here on the left, we have a whole series of vertical rows. Each one of these vertical rows is a layer. And you can see that we have seven layers for us to construct our sequence in. This is identical, and it works almost identically to the way that Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve edit to get together all of their video clips. If we were to select in the middle here, I'm going to left click and drag, you can see that I can put this clip pretty much anywhere I want inside of my scene itself. 
You can use your standard viewport navigation controls to zoom in, zoom out, pan left and right. It's no different from the timelines that we've seen in other parts of Blender. It's actually identical to the timelines that we've seen in other parts of Blender. So it should feel very comfortable to you as we start to work with these clips in this environment. Now dragging in the middle uh, is will allow us to change the location both in time and on all of these other video tracks. However, if we look very carefully here, there's three important components to the actual video clip itself. If you look carefully, the white outline around the box itself defines the first component, and it's the global understanding of the clip in time. With my left mouse button depressed on the clip itself, you can see that the computer has given us some very important numbers down in the lower corners of the video clip. At the moment, it says 90 on the lower left-hand corner and 114 on the lower right-hand corner. This is telling us the duration of frames and where the start and stop point for this clip exists inside of our timeline. So the beginning of this clip is on frame 90 and the end of this clip is on frame 114. If we do the math, 114 minus 90, we can see the duration, the total duration of this one image inside of our timeline, which is the default value of 24 frames, which is pretty cool. I'm digging that. I'm, I'm pretty liking that. Now, if we wanted to shorten or lengthen the in and the out point of this clip inside of our timeline, it's really easy. And that's where the second and third components of the video sequence editor come into play. If you look very carefully, and I apologize because it is, it is rather small, Right here and right here, we, the clip is slightly darker. These are the out points and the in points, when the clip starts and when the clip ends. Since this is a, uh, a, a photograph, I can extend this as long or as short as I want, simply by clicking on the out point, this little bar, then left clicking and dragging it inside of the video sequence editor. Same goes for the in point. I can click on that little bar and then drag it this way. And I've made that file, or excuse me, this clip uh, much longer inside the animation. Now it's gonna take, what, almost four seconds or so, six seconds to play this clip versus something that's much smaller. Maybe I only want it to be on screen for, I don't know, a second or so. I can just change the in and out point, and now it's gonna be only on screen for that duration. So the two little bars on either side is our method for going in and adjusting the duration of the in and out point. Okay. I'm going to move this down just by left clicking on it and dragging inside of my interface. And uh, at times it, it kind of gets stuck, if you will, on the selection of these in and out point. See how this, this white bar here is selected still and I can't drag down. I, that's kind of annoying. If I deselect it and then click in the middle, now the entire clip has this white boundary on it, which gives us a nice visual reinforcer that we're working at the clip level, not the in or the out point, and we're free to move this clip around anywhere inside of our timeline. So be mindful of what's colored inside of the clip. If you accidentally have the in or the out point selected, it's gonna really prevent you from, from dragging it around uh, to, to a different location inside of our timeline. All right, so this is the first shot of my, of my little sequence here, and I'm gonna put this way down over here on frame one. The great thing about working with inside the visual sequence, the video sequence editor, is that we can construct a very, very quick uh, a cut of our film just with the storyboards that we already have in mind, or already, already have in tow. Now these are all images from me. Let me drag in a couple more. And uh, let me hit, I'm gonna hit the undo key here. And I'm gonna put my playhead where I want the, the next shot to be. There we go. And I'm just gonna put couple of these images down into my timeline so that I can start working. I'm going to do this very quickly and this kind of speaks to the power of the video sequence editor is that we can do this quickly. If we don't have to go to a different application. We can actually start figuring out the, uh, this, the, the total duration and the edit, if you will, of all of these layers very, very quickly. Yeah, I'm liking this. I'm liking this. I want to make some small adjustments to the duration of these shots in here so that I can get a good sense of the timing of this sequence. These are the three, these are three storyboard panels that do a really great job of establishing the key frames. And this is where Dumbo gets rinsed by his mom whoosh, with all the water. And then we start to see Dumbo come uh, come out from all underneath all the, bu uh, the bubbles. So let's make this a little bit shorter. With the second shot down here selected, I'm just going to make this Oh, I don't know. Let's make this about 10 frames. This is gonna go pretty short. 
And this is just an experimentation. I don't know how long this needs to be. I am really kind of experimenting with this on the fly. And these are the types of questions that we want to get answered really early on. We want to know pretty quickly, before we draw any of our keyframes, how long each of these shots are going to be. Because the duration of each one of these shots is going to determine how many keyframes we need to describe the movement with inside the expectation of the shot's duration. Let's play. I'm going to hit Shift Space Bar to play my animation at the location of the playhead. Yeah, I like that. That's a good start. That's a good start. So the video sequence editor does a fantastic job, and I really do mean a fantastic job, of allowing us to very quickly take a whole series of existing assets, video files, photographs, music, sound effect files, and throw them into a timeline so we can start editing and exploring their total duration right here inside of Blender.